Agar, straight to our top focus. The order on the Gyanwapi case is set to be pronounced today by the Varanasi District Judge Court. The decision relates to the maintainability of Hindu women's plea seeking permission to worship Hindu deities in the Gyanwapi Mosque complex. The Anjuman Anzamiya Committee has said that the Gyanwapi Mosque is a WAF property and questioned the maintainability of the plea. The case is being heard by the district court following a Supreme Court order. The district judge will render its decision on whether the ongoing trial in the court regarding the permission to worship is maintainable and whether the plea is based on tenable grounds or not. I greet you with this, this construction by our team of what is a view of the entire Kashi Vishwanath Parisar, including the Gyanwapi area, which is a mosque. This square, ladies and gentlemen, of both together forms the whole Gyanwapi or Kashi Vishwanath Mandir area. This area, if you see, if you put the Mandir and Masjid area together, you would realize that this is a square. This land where the current mandir is, and of course it's been extended into the Kashi Vishwanath Dham corridor all the way up to Maganga. But this area, this portion was built by Ahilya Bai Holkar. Ahilya Bai Holkar bought this land sometime in the 1800s and then she built this place. She bought it from the local Nawab. But this area is what many believe is the original actual seat of Baba Vishweshwar. This is the Shivling of Shivaji. This is the plot, this is the place which was desecrated not once, but not twice, but thrice. And this is the place which in 1669 was brought down, broken down by Aurangzeb. Upon his orders, it was broken down. Before that, even in the 12th century, under Kutubuddin Ebak, this place, this seat of Shaivik Astha had been broken down. But this is where many devotees believe rest still now is Baba Vishwanath waiting for his time, waiting for the time when his devotees can see him and when he will come back and once again restore Kashi to its place that it enjoys even as it finds a mention in Rig Veda. That's what the, that's what the Asthais believe. But now let's just split this area to try and understand the dynamics, ladies and gentlemen, as we stretch it out a little. And here it comes in front of us. The mandir on one side and you have the masjid on the other. Now what's unique about the mandir is this wall, this wall which is now there was not there always. This wall has been built in recent times. Earlier this is how it used to look. You had Nandi with his back, Nandi with his back to the existing shrine which is a never seen because the Vahana of Shiva is always looking to him. So which way and who is Nandi looking at? That's a question many people would ask. There are conspiracy theorists who believe that Nandi was not always sitting there. He's been suddenly placed there ever since PM Modi came. <laughs> then read the historians. Read those people and listen to those people who have come there and for centuries asked this question that why is Nandi looking away? from the temple that was built by Ahilya Bhai Holkar. Which way is Nandi looking? Now this is the direction, exactly 83 feet to the other side. That is where Nandi is looking, ladies and gentlemen. And where is Nandi looking? Nandi is looking to that area, which for centuries has been used as a wash area or a wazukhana before they entered the Gyanwapi Mosque by Muslims. But their rest right in the middle, right in the middle, after this distance of 83 feet, which is again mentioned by historians, which is again mentioned in the description of the temple, this 83 feet, right there, right there, in that covered area, in that square-like pond, many believe, is the Shivling, is the Jyotirling, it's the original seat of Kashi Vishwanath. So these 83 feet have also been measured in the survey report that we have accessed here at CNN News 18. This is the 83 feet that is mentioned by Dr. Moti Chandra in Kashi Ka Itihas. This is the distance that historians have mentioned, poets have mentioned, 
pundits have mentioned ladies and gentlemen and this distance has been mapped yet again and submitted to the varanasi court so there we brought it for our viewers of what really the dispute is but first let me bring in my colleague pranch who's been tracking all these developments for us he is joining us from varanasi even as there is section 144 in place pranch who first just recap for our viewers what really is this dispute does the places of worship act actually come into play because that's where the big dispute is yes uh, you know even as the police all across the state in fact we just ha also have this version coming in from adg law and order of uttar pradesh prashant kumar who says that how uh, the police arrangement has been made appropriate across the state including of course the ap center of varanasi but shifting our focus to this crucial case now why this case is so important yes because it it relates to the kashi vishnath and the gan rapi dispute which has of course taken the legal dimensions legal manifestations only over the past few months but which has been the part of the larger controversy for past many many decades remember there was a time when kashi mathura along with ayodhya used to be on the, the declared agenda list for the rss now after after the ayodhya case rss of course is silent on the issue of mathura and kashi but now there is a clear legal dispute or the clear legal maneuvering that has started around the kashi's uh, you know uh, gyan vyapi versus the kashi vishnu dispute talking of this particular case uh, earlier this year there was this petition moved by the five women devotees hindu devotees mm. uh, in a case known as the uh, the ma shringar gauri versus the gyan vapi and then we all saw that how a lower okay. civil judge court okay. ordered for so, our advocate uh, commissioner to serve currently is... yes pranjit we can hear you go ahead yeah so you know we all saw that how the civil judge court started with some major uh, decision in this case and then the muslim side went to the supreme court seeking that the proceedings in that civil judge court should be barred supreme court in its wisdom said that we want this case to be heard by a judicial officer of a significant experience of 15 or 14 years of experience and that's how this matter came to the district judge court district judge court started hearing on 27th of may that is may last week this this year and for 3 months it kept on hearing the arguments from the muslim side and the hindu side petition before the, the district judge court was primarily that muslim side said that under the provisions of the places of religious worship act of 1991 the very hindu suit on which the orders were passed by the civil judge court are not maintainable this suit should be should be quashed and and, and hence all the orders passed by the lower court should also be quashed that is the primary petition on which the muslim side has its given its argument they have claimed that it is a work property they have handed over several documents to the court claiming that this is the proof that it is a work property they have cited extensively from the places of the worship act of 1991 counter to it the hindu side has given its own argument they have given certain you know uh, details from the ancient scriptures uh, on the basis of which they claim that the original character of this place was already a hindu temple in way back in 1947 and therefore it can't be covered by the places of worship pact they have also given evidences to counter the muslim side's argument that this is a play, this is a work property now whose arguments have been convincing that is the moment we'll get a clarity uh, you know in couple of hours from now when the court decides on this matter so today the one liner agenda before the court is to decide that whether the petition filed by the muslim side seeking the quashing of the hindu petition whether that 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 that, that, that argument from the muslim side is accepted or not depending on what the court has to say this case will be further open to the, uh, the future legal possibilities any side who loses hindu or the muslim side will naturally move to either to the high court or supreme court against the orders of of of, of, uh, of the district judge court the other question is what happens if the hindu side wins then of course we'll come to the other part what happens of the survey report which has already been done what happens of that order of sealing the wazukhana area on the grounds that you know it might be an ancient hindu uh, shivling then of course the district judge court at the date whichever it feels fit will start hearing but before that i am very sure that whatever might be the judgment today we are clearly going to see the further arguments in the in, in the in, in the higher court either high court or else the supreme court okay